So oneness is a, is a term that so many people are using, and I use it a lot too. And it's come to my attention that it means different things to different people. And I actually did a, a radio interview recently for Beyond Reality Radio, where the host actually said to me, Aaron, you're using oneness as if it's a noun. And it occurred to me, oh my gosh, he doesn't have that same filter of understanding what oneness is that I do and that most people that I talk to don't have that filter. And of course it makes perfect sense. Even after I began talking to, it makes perfect sense that most people don't have that filter. They haven't had this one experience of oneness that I've had. Now it's come to my attention talking to um, somebody on email recently that other people have had an experience similar to this. I mean, of course, it's just something I hadn't really considered whether or not other people are experiencing this. And to be honest with you, when I started thinking about making this video a few weeks ago, I got really, really scared. And I had always thought that my biggest fear was telling my parents and the rest of my family that I talked to God and I had, but it turns out that I have an even bigger fear and it's sharing this experience of oneness with others. Phil knows it, but nobody else knows it. And to be honest with you, Phil doesn't even understand it. So I have two fears around sharing this with you. One is I'm afraid you're not going to understand. I'm not going to be able to communicate it so that you understand because I haven't been able to do that with Phil. And my second fear is you're not going to believe me, but you know, everything that I do now is about overcoming my own fears, taking action despite those fears and encouraging and empowering you to do the same. So we're going to dive into my story and uh, let's do it. So when I started talking to IM in 2011, I, um, I had a lot of doubts and people have, you know, you guys have been asking me this, these questions, you know, Aaron, do you ever have doubts? And oh my, and, and a lot of you have started to recognize IM's voice. Um, and you have doubts about it though. You're like, am I going crazy? Could that actually be the voice? Is that yes. That is I am's voice. And when I first started hearing it, I had doubts all the time. Whenever I wasn't directly having a conversation with I am's voice, I was doubting. And if you read chapter eight in um, One Truth, One Law, that's all my doubts. I'm, I'm afraid everybody's going to think I'm crazy. And I'm afraid deep down that I am crazy. And it took, it, it was probably about an a year and a half after I first started talking to I am that I experienced this oneness that we're going to get into. And after that experience, I've never, ever, ever had those doubts again. I am a hundred percent sure that I am is real. I am a hundred percent sure that I, my inner self really is. I am. It's not this persona that I think is Aaron. And I am a hundred percent sure that every other human being has that same inner self and is the same I am that I am. And I am 100% sure that every other living thing and things that most of us consider to be inanimate objects are all I am as well. So I don't have any of those doubts at all anymore. I have complete knowing, but I still have tons of fears because I have chosen to remain human. So I had this experience, um, after I first started talking to, I am, I really, really, really wanted to become fully. I am now I am told me I had the choice, right? I had the choice to become fully. I am without a persona or remain human, keep your persona and follow your blueprint and start creating. Well, I didn't want to be human anymore. At the time, Phil and I were broke. We were about to be evicted from our apartment. We had just lost our jobs. Um, we were in Virginia Beach. We were thousands of miles away from either of our families. And we felt really stuck. We felt crappy. And I didn't really see what's so great about being human, right? 
So I absolutely wanted to become I am. It sounded amazing that I would have all this creative knowing and power and I could go change our life and, and make our life what we wanted it to be. So I focused really, really hard on that. We did get evicted. Yes. Um, I, I did stuff like I, I tried to use I am to win the lottery. But the whole time I was doing that stuff, I was so full of doubts. Um, and none of it worked. I was trying to lose my persona, but instead of putting knowing out there and creating that with knowing, I was creating it with doubts and it didn't work and it felt lousy all the time, but I really, really wanted it. And I kept trying, I kept trying to understand more and talking to I am all the time and trying to figure out how am I going to lose my persona? And one day, Phil and I were actually having, we had moved in with my parents and this was in the summer of 2012. So towards the end of the summer. So it was maybe a little bit over a year, maybe a year and three months since I had started talking to I am and uh, yeah, about that long. And we were having a garage sale at my parents' house, which is where we were living. And a man came up to us. Phil's back had been hurt really bad for a few days. And a man came up to us and he just looked at Phil and said, I'm going to fix your back for you. And Phil was like, yeah, great. And I'm like, who is, who is this guy? What do you mean? You know, but the guy was doing something to Phil's back and it was over in, in you know, 10 seconds. And Phil was like, wow, I feel amazing. <laughs> like, okay. What just happened? And he, uh, and he, he gave his card to Phil and he said, uh, you have to come see me. He wasn't even talking to me. He said, you have to come see me. And he had introduced himself to both of us. And he said, you have to bring Aaron with you. And so a few days later, he didn't give us his phone number, but his address was written on this card and his first name. And his name was John. And so a few days later, Phil dragged me to his house because Phil's back was feeling great. And he's like, I want some more of that. You know, and I'm like, this is weird. I don't want anything to do with this. And uh, anyway, we ended up, we ended up going and we had no idea how much he was going to charge us or what it was. And I remember we had a few hundred dollars with us. And to us at that time, that was like the world. It was like the moon and the stars and the sun and and everything else. And, but, but we were there. Phil really, really wanted to do it. He felt incredibly strongly about it. And so I was standing very nervously on, on John's porch, you know, we were knocking on the door and nobody was answering. He ended up pulling it, pulling up his car. And I can't remember everything that happened, but he definitely, he worked a lot more on Phil's back. And, and he said, well, this is, this is why you're here. After he was done with Phil's back, he started talking to me and his attention was fully focused on me. He said that he had to present himself through Phil because I never would have come on my own. I would have made excuses, but I was there because it was part of my blueprint and there was something that I had to experience uh, to move forward and do what I was here to do. And he was going to help me with that. Um, he did something really, I mean, he was, he was an energy healer, but he wasn't like your average Reiki practitioner that, um, you know, sets up shop in your neighborhood. He wasn't advertising his services and he, he could actually move objects around his living room, you know, from feet, oh, many feet away. He was moving objects with his hand. It, it was it was like something you would see in the matrix or something. And, and he knew exactly who he was. He was telling me, um, well, I, I guess I'll get into it. When I was, I had this memory my whole life and I always really, really wondered about it. And the memory was uh, my mom worked when I was a kid and um, we had many, many different babysitters. And I can remember being very, very little and being in a, a room with a boy who was older than me. And I remember screaming and his mom was, was banging on the door. 
to try to get into the room, but he had locked the door and I never knew what, what had happened. I couldn't remember and it scared me because um, I, I, I really didn't have any idea what went on there, but I knew that it was some sort of block that I had, my subconscious had blocked out. And then, anyway, so he was able to explain to me that the boy had sat on my, on my face and it suffocated me and I actually died for, for a minute. And, uh, and I, I came back though. I wasn't supposed to die then. And that actually made a lot of sense because I was never, ever, ever violent towards my younger brother as a child. I never had any, any violent tendencies, but as a young child, I remembered once I, I sat on his face and I was trying to hurt him. And I never had did anything like that. I remember my mom came in and she she panicked, made me get up, and I felt so guilty. I felt so bad. And I asked myself, Aaron, why did you do that? And I didn't know the answer. But after John explained to me that that exact same thing was done to me, then I knew why I acted it out to my brother. Of course, I was trying to deal with the the physical, the emotional pain of what had happened to me. So anyway. I was, I was very trusting of him and he wasn't, it, it was, it just, it blew my mind how that cleared everything up for me. Anyway, he ended up um, generating tons of energy and I don't really remember this, but Phil explained he was, he was doing breathing and going like this and generating energy and shooting it into me. So I can't take credit for any of the causing this experience of oneness that I had, except that I had had an incredibly strong desire for over a year for it to happen, to have this experience. And I do believe that that's why uh, we were led to John. So he, I, I didn't know why I was there or what I, we, I thought I was there for Phil. Anyway. Phil was there for me and that's what it turned out to be anyway. So he, he pumped energy into me from across the room and my persona actually disappeared. And at that point, I was no longer confined to my body. This is nothing at all like the experience that shamans describe or people who do astral traveling describe of basically getting into some sort of a, a meditative state and and you you imagine your body floating your you know your your inner self floating above and you you travel around that's not what this was this was i was no longer confined to my body I was much bigger. I filled up the entire room. My body was still there. I could feel it, but I could also feel Phil's body and John's body and everything else in the room. And I knew that Aaron's persona was still inside that body, but it wasn't me. And I knew, first of all, I felt absolute radiating joy. And that was when I understood that energy is not the substance of the universe. Love is what energy actually is. And I understood then everything I am had ever said. And my filter expanded. And I haven't lost any of that understanding since this experience. So that was an amazing, amazing gift. While I was, I was basically looking down at the room at, while at the same time being everything in the room. And when I looked at, at Phil and when I looked at John and when I felt Aaron's body down below, I felt nothing but love for them, but also sadness because they didn't understand the truth. They didn't understand that this was all an illusion and that none of it was real and that they were really one with me and that we were everything and that they were 
complete creators. And when I say they, I am talking about Aaron's persona along with Phil and John's. Because in that moment, I was only I am. And I don't know if that moment was 30 seconds or 10 minutes or an hour. I don't know. But I know that I never wanted it to end. It was the most amazing, most transformational experience that I could have ever had in my life. And when it was over, I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried for days. I can remember Phil, Phil drove me home and I mean, I was, I was inconsolable. I walked into my parents' house and I, I just remember thinking, oh my God, this is, how can I, how can I go back to life? The life that I knew knowing what I know now, really not just hearing the words, but understanding that this is really all just an illusion. And uh, John didn't understand what he was doing either because he had recommended before we left that I go see a a Catholic priest. And I was so lost at the time. I thought, well, maybe I should, you know, what do I, how am I going to, and he also, John also told me that he had a a, more of a message for me um, that, you know, I was here to do something based on that experience and um and that you know it was part of his blueprint to help me have that experience but then i was going to go do something with it and after that experience all i wanted was was that experience again and i started talking to i am about it and you know i wanted to lose my persona and i understood very very clearly almost immediately to be in that state all the time was 100% possible. And there are enlightened masters that have walked this earth that have done that. But in order to be in that state all the time, I would have to separate myself from society. I would have to separate myself from all people and from anything that has been created in this world beyond I am's original creation, anything that's been created by humans. I would have to go off into the woods and I am told me it would be a period of at least a month, probably longer. And I really, really wanted to do that, except I didn't want to leave Phil because I loved Phil. I still love Phil. He's my partner. And I am explained the most powerful thing in the world to me when I expressed that desire, not wanting to leave Phil and feeling like there was something wrong with me because here John had told me that I had a purpose. I am has been telling me I had a purpose. And so shouldn't it be my purpose to leave Phil and step into being who I really am? And I am said, no, no, Aaron, you're missing, you're missing the point. The point is you're here to be human and you're here to tell everybody that is the point of this. So many people are awakening to the fact that we are all one. This world is an illusion, but the truth is this world was created on purpose. It was not an accident. The only limitation I am has as an unlimited creator is that I am as one with everything. And so I am cannot, absolutely cannot connect with anything else unless I am puts the veil of the persona over its own eyes, at which point I am can then connect and have those experiences of finding and loving others. That is why this world exists and there is nothing wrong with it. And the amazing thing is, and I know it a hundred percent because I experienced it. When you die, you will be one with the oneness again. You will be fully I am. This life you have is an absolute gift. And 
There's the end of my cat. This life is a gift. And if you spend it chasing being fully I am without a persona, you're saying to this gift, no, thank you. I don't want to participate. And there's no reason to do that because you are 100% guaranteed to be fully I am upon your death. So while I don't know your specific blueprint, and I think there is very a very high likelihood that there are some blueprints out there of people who are meant to transcend the mountain and become fully I am here on earth. And I do believe that there have been enlightened masters that have done that. But they aren't your average spiritual leader that's driving a convertible and living in a mansion. They're the ones that have basically lived a monk-like existence and been very fulfilled by that. Those are the ones that have done things like this. But for most of us, and probably for you, your blueprint includes embracing your humanity, having an understanding that you don't need to chase the experience of being fully I am here in this world during this lifetime, knowing that when you die, you will be fully I am. So I feel amazing having shared this message with you. And even though this is something that really, really scared me now that I've done it, I feel so empowered. And as I continue to do these things that seem so scary to me, every time I, I do another one, I feel so empowered. So I really, I'd like to end this by saying to you, what is holding you back? from taking the next step on your path or taking the first step on your path or even trusting yourself enough to know that you might have a path. What fears are holding you back and what's the first tiny step that you can take to overcome one of those fears? Well, thank you so much for, for listening to my story and I, I really do love you guys.